networking.
Blessed be God, Mother, Sufferer, Advocate. And blessed be the rain, now and forever. Amen. Hear the word of God. As an eagle stirs upon her nest and hovers over her young, as she spreads her wings, takes them up, and bears them aloft on her pinions, God alone guides us. Before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Of Paul. A reading from the second letter of Peter. For we do not follow sophisticated mythologies when we made known to you all the power and coming of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Rather, we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For Christ from God the Sovereign received honor and glory. A voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, this is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. And we ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. Thus we have a sure prophetic word. You would do well to be attentive to this and as to a lamp shining in a shadowy place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First, this you must understand, that of all written prophecy, none is a matter of individual interpretation, for not by human will, for not by human will ever come any prophecy. Rather, women and men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. For the word of God in scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us.
The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. And Jesus said to the crowd, Truly I tell you all, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the majesty of God has come in power. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and brought them up a high mountain by themselves, alone. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes began shining, becoming exceedingly white, such as no cloth refiner on earth could bleach them. And then Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. We will pitch three tents here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. For he did not know what to say, because they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them but only Jesus himself. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them so that they would tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Woman had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. And they asked him, why do the biblical scholars say that Elijah must come first? Then Jesus said to them, Elijah is indeed coming first to restore all things. Now, how then it is, is it written about the Son of Woman that through many sufferings he is to go and be treated with contempt? Yet I tell you all that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, just as it is written about him. The Gospel of the Lord. And he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see that the kingdom of God has come with power. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling bright, such as no one on earth could brighten them. There appeared with them Moses and Elijah who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us set up three tents, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. I am God's son, the beloved. Listen to me. You are God's son, the beloved. Listen to him. 
Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with him anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the resurrection of the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Then they asked him, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? Elijah must come first to restore all things. How then is it written about the Son of Man that he is to go through many sufferings and be treated with contempt? But truly I tell you, Elijah has come. And they did to him whatever they pleased. When the whole crowd saw him, they were immediately overcome with awe. They ran forward to greet him. Some scribes were arguing with Jesus, and the disciples were around him, and he asked them, What are you arguing about with them? Someone from the crowd answered, Teacher! 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 I brought you my child. She has a spirit that makes her unable to speak. Whenever it seizes her, it dashes her down, and she foams and grinds her teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they could not do so. He answered them, You faithless generation, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring her to me. And they brought the child to him. When the spirit saw him, immediately it convulsed the girl. And she fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. She cried out. Daddy, hurt. Jesus asked the father. How long has this been happening? He said, from childhood. It has often cast her into the fire and into the water to destroy her. But if you are able to do anything, help us. Have compassion on us. Jesus said, if you are able Anything is possible for the one who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out, I believe, I believe, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit saying to it, I command you, spirit that keeps this child from speaking and listening, come out and never enter her again. After crying out and convulsing her terribly, it came out and her body was like a corpse so that most of them said, she's dead. But Jesus came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. And she was able to stand. When he was in the house, the disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? And he said, This kind can only come out through prayer. For the word of God in Scripture. For the word of God, word of God within us. Thanks, thanks be to God.
Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Mother, from whom every family in heaven and on earth She who speaks life brought the world to being and entrusted it to our care. Creating God, guide the universal church in knowledge and love of you. Remind us to care for the fullness of your creation. Assist us in supporting the flourishing of your people around the world. Ever-living God, She who is exalted is the ruler of all and the lover of justice. Mighty God, lead those in authority toward justice, freedom, and peace. Orient our individual pursuits of justice toward you and your kingdom. Ever-living God, she who provides and saves will never stop caring for her people. Loving God, be present with our community offer your healing and mercy to Jack, Anna Gardano, Clarion, Ray Suarez, Becky Slater, Paul, Kristen, Scott Bridgewater, Addie Lee, Vivian, Ginny, Jeanette, Millie, Alice and Daryl Sperling, Paul and Regina Fitzgerald, Betsy, Jillian, the Most Reverend Michael Curry, for the people of Ukraine, Palestine, and Israel, and for all those whose lives are torn apart by war and violence. And to those needs we name aloud or in our hearts. Ever-living God, she who is faithful has offered us many great gifts. Generous God, we praise you with gratitude and thanksgiving for the Flower Guild and for the blessings we name aloud or in our hearts. Ever-living God, she who is eternal grants us everlasting life in her glory. Heavenly God, mercifully accept your servants who have died into your house. We pray especially for Lean Herdershe, Genevieve Timpain, Crystal Green, and for the departed we name aloud or in our hearts. Ever living God, Mighty and merciful God, we lift our prayers to you. Respond in your loving kindness and strengthen us to do your will. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you.
It is a great joy to welcome you to St. Columbus Church this morning. It's a special joy to welcome those of you who are worshiping with us for the very first time today. And if you're here for the first time, thank you. Thank you for joining us. We're really glad that you're here. Please help us welcome you by taking a moment and fill out one of the welcome cards that you'll find in the pew, and you can place that in the offering plate as your gift to us today. I also invite you right after the service to make your way into the common. We'll have a chance to greet one another and to share some refreshments. Also, a special welcome to those who are worshiping with us online today. We are glad that you are here with us today. This week marks the changing of the liturgical season as we are soon to embark upon the season of Lent. And that means that this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday, and I invite you to join us. There are four services that day, and I hope you can make it for one of them, 7 a.m., noon, or 4 p.m. 4 p.m. is geared towards younger children and their families, or it's 7 p.m. And if you can't make it here, perhaps there's a church near you. And if you can't make it to any of those, there are ashes to go on the street corner. So join us for that. Wednesday being Ash Wednesday means that Tuesday is Shrove Tuesday, Fat Tuesday, Mardi Gras, uh, which means that we'll be feasting. And I invite you to join us for Shrove Tuesday supper that night. Uh, let us know that you're coming, but even if it's a last-minute decision, there's always lots. And we'll be uh, burning last year's palms uh, to create the ashes for Ash Wednesday. So join us uh, Tuesday. There won't be our usual Wednesday night supper because we'll have it Tuesday night. And uh, about two dozen members of this congregation are about to take off on pilgrimage for several days uh, doing a civil rights pilgrimage into the south. David Griswold is leading that. If you are here and part of that pilgrimage, would you just stand? I want to say a prayer of, a prayer of blessing and... Um, I need all of you to join me. Okay, good. There are a bunch of you here. Let us pray for these pilgrims. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Loving God, we give you thanks for stirring this congregation to a deeper awareness of the sin of racism and the legacy of racial inequity and white privilege that you call us to dismantle. Bless these pilgrims as they journey to sacred places in our country's struggle for racial justice. Open their eyes, ears, minds, and hearts to seek your truth as they and we recommit ourselves to be people of repentance and repair, builders of your beloved community. We send them forth in Jesus' name. Amen. There are a host of ways you can join us in the life of this church. I invite you to do so. All of our ministries are created by all of us. And this morning, after receiving communion, if you wish to receive laying on of hands for a healing prayer, uh, you can go either to that corner of the church back there or up around to the kneelers behind me. Let us now walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself for us a gift and sacrifice to God. Praise the 
God is here. Her spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them unto God. Let us give thanks to our sovereign God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You gave us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. Wonderful is the work of your hands, O God. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your gaze remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus to be our Savior, born of Mary to be the bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks, gave it to them, broke it, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood, which is shed for you, poured out for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his life, death, and resurrection, we present to you from your creation this bread and this wine. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon them, that they may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son, holy food and drink of new and unending life. Form us in the image and likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you on earth and in heaven, we worship you in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven.
gift of God for the people of God, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome at Christ's table.
Let us pray. Nourishing God, thank you for inviting us to your table. are gathered, fed, and sent by God, let us ask ourselves, with whom can I share the good news of Christ? With whom will I, whom will I invite to join us at this table? And now, Carol, in the name of St. Columbus, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts that Anona Fowler may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We, we who are many are one body. We all share a one friend, one cup. Thank you. The wisdom of God, the love of God, and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in the world. And our triune God, mother, suffer, and advocate, bless you and keep you always. Amen. Amen. As bearers of the light of Christ, let us go forth into the world to live God's love. Alleluia! Alleluia! Thanks be to God! Alleluia!